to a screen. And you can just say, he's also waiting to hear about the pilot that he just shot called Lifesaver for NBC Network. Right? Oh, right. Which, which was a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so my, the, the, the transition to, from stage to screen is it's a fascinating one. It was amazing to see Patrick do it at such an early age. There's a moment I will tell you all, um, watching him as a junior uh, in college, there was a specific moment where Patrick opened up his voice to sing, where we all, literally everybody who's watching just went, oh, that's that thing. And it's something that you can't buy and something that you can't learn. But what's amazing about Patrick and what's been amazing about watching him grow and find the success about like you. That, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, it's, it's, it's not just that talent and it's not just luck, it's how you do it. And it's Patrick works with such grace and kindness and charm and preparedness uh, that I think is the thing that will keep you in this thing for the long run. Am I right about that? I think so. Thank you. So tell me about the first time that you. <laughs> Harder than anyone has ever taken. I hope, of course, that everyone found different tricks. 
I would keep my eyes open for minutes at a time before I had to go on, and then I would get out of there and I would find a light and just stare at that light. And then I was pretending that I was having really deep set thoughts. Tear would come and I'd be like, oh, now we're going Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? 
difficult, I think, about uh, my gift and man experience. Well, that was difficult, but yeah. Look, it's a, it was a great but challenge. Challenging. Those hours get to be very, very, very challenging. You're talking 14, 15 hour days. And you were the gifted man on a gifted man. I was a gifted man. man. <laughs> I would like to say that. You were number one on the call sheet, right? I was. On the call sheet, every actor has a number on it. And, you know, the <coughs> gifted man, you're number one. And you were number one almost every season. It took four episodes to get me out of a scene. Wow. To shoot a scene without me. And then it became this thing. And I mean, just awful. <laughs> The problem was that they do that, and then you're scheduled to shoot for eight days, and of course you go, over. Well, how many days did you guys have to shoot an episode? Eight. Yeah. And we, would you always do nine or ten? Or did you get young? Yeah. 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 And so, but it's, so if you're in almost, let's say you're in eight out of ten scenes, well, there's two scenes that should be your day off. You're now a day over, so now you're actually into the next episode, but you're, what should have been your day off was you're now doing scenes for the last episode. So it really it was very difficult to keep. And also for me, it's also the, if you're looking at network, freshman, drama, lead actor, it's a lot to, I mean, even Julianna Barnaby's has said this to me. She's like, the first two years are going to be really rough. Um, How'd the second year go? <laughs> and the problem was for me, and it's probably just coming from the theater or doing a lot of independent. Um, that you that that it really always felt like about the work. It wasn't yes, the line producers and everybody was worried about your schedule and your how many shots you're going to get that day. But I was never conscious of that until Gifted Man, where you're literally where you're just like blocking a scene. You know, if, and I, you, you sort of think I can sit here and drink this. I mean, probably feel more natural to go over there and look at the whatever it is. But I know if I go over there, they're going to own that coverage, which is about another couple hours. So you know what? I'm just going to sit here and look that way. Because if I look that way, eventually they're going to go, oh, we got to turn this way and shoot. So then you're like, ah, oh, man, that's just not, it's very, like your main goal is how do we get through the day? There's, there's fun in figuring out. That's the, in the different form from theater to film to TV. I, that's the fun part is figuring out the different mechanics. Sure. Okay, so going from Smash to shot a film with Michael Mann. <laughs> yeah, go. Okay, so Michael Mann, who I've revered for my entire life, is doing a movie about cyber terrorism starring Chris Hemsworth. Does everybody know Michael Mann? Thor. Um, so Michael Mann, uh, Heat, The Insider, um, Manhunter, fabulous. Um, and this, as yet untitled movie, uh, I have a very small part where I play this kind of uh, douchey guy with a goatee. That's how you know I'm And the man, <laughs> he's an incredibly intimidating man. He's brilliant and he surrounds himself with people who uh, will follow him to the ends of the earth. Um, and there was the, my one Michael Mann story. He's like a guy's guy. He's probably about five, six, and he's still here. He wakes up three hours early and goes to the gym for an hour. And he's just like, he's, he's almost a savant. He knows every single detail in the, in the, in the costume fitting, we're trying on the ties, and they're like, just wait until the tie thing happens. And he is meticulous about tie knot, the tie, the collar, but it's unbelievable. That's your close Yeah, I think that's your close So this is one shot I'm on the phone talking to somebody in China. Spoiler alert, they weren't really in China. <laughs> Yeah, um, I 
need you to react to what the guy is saying. <laughs> Because I felt like the director, you know, I don't go there first. 
first, you know, I'm like... Oh, you haven't lived. Well, <laughs> um, do you like watching yourself on the <laughs> If it's good. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. I'd like to go back to the monitor and look. But like, as we said before, what you feel like is good is not always, you know, uh, just it's not always transitive. But I, I'm not sure. the surprising thing. So you've seen most of your, in so many movies, do you see most of them when they come out in a cinema place? Are you yeah, we see everything. Yeah, no, we see everything. Um, what's, what's been the most surprising performance that you thought maybe it was a whiff or you thought it was a whiff? Uh, nervous about it, but then you saw it and you were like, holy oh, crap, that was great. Oh, I don't know if you meant that. Well, if I thought something that I saw was really great when I did that to you, really great. No, I don't think I'm I, I, I think I have, I think that there are moments where I feel like, but usually it's like, you know, there are fleeting moments in the film. I, I, it's very rare that I see a performance that, that I think, I killed it. Yeah. I mean, I think, but if there's anything, if it's like Barry Monday or something really yeah. random that probably very few have seen. If you haven't seen Barry Monday, treat yourself. Just go back. <laughs> but it was really fun to see you to see that side of you that we that I've known since I was 17 years old, right now with the character on film. It's right. Like a departure for you. Right. No. Well, it's hard to break into that that bracket. Yeah. You know, and doing. You know, we did a movie stretch last year that I thought was super funny, and it was, and then you know, for a, a, a number of circumstances, it sits on the shelf and try to figure out how. Yeah, there was a, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh as a comic book nerd, and I was either going to be a comic book artist or an actor. And uh, he's an amazing artist. That's nice. amazing. Um, I, I uh, still collect comics, and I've been obsessed with it since I was in sixth grade. And uh, there was a moment um, I remember where I was standing in an apartment in New York City. Patrick called me, and he said, "I have a meeting. They gave me a script for this thing called Watchmen." <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of horror either, but it was 
good one. Yeah, because I think, if anything, it takes you back to like, it's like I remember doing in cities when it's, we were talking about in cities too, you know, like where else except for college do you get to like wear prosthetics and act like someone is possessed by the dread of this stuff? You know, what I call something. Yeah, so I, for me, independent film and the, those types of movies, and also because you could shoot it in about six weeks, you know, is become sort of my, um, I guess similar to like just I want to do theater. Like I get to stretch out on uh, you know on independent movies, which the studio system. It's also because the studio system they just make fewer movies, so they'd rather put three hundred million dollars into promoting you know uh, a, a studio tentpole than um, you know than making four movies like Little Children or Lady of Terrace or those movies that probably just wouldn't be done anymore. Yeah. Just wouldn't be made. That's really, really frustrating. Yeah. Do you feel that pressure as an actor when you're doing when you want a bigger movie to do you feel any pressure or do you just no. do your thing? No, I think you just do your thing. If there's any, like nobody's gonna put more pressure on a performance than me, you know. So I because there's also maybe there's just a security going, I feel like I've done some movies that I thought were really good or should be and they don't turn out good or they're not successful. Either way, there's nothing you can do about it. You know? It's only, I think it's on the, on the smaller movies where you're, you know, it's like about you. You know, then it's, then there's a little sense of pressure, like I gotta figure out what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Dad! I love the way. Dad, why are you This is a question. Consider doing uh, TV again. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if it's 
if it's good, the, the reality is outside of independent film. I mean, especially the way, like, you, you know, it's, it's such a broad topic now between Netflix and everything else, and True Detective and the success of these small shows. It's also network TV and doing 22, 23, 24 episodes on a network TV schedule is totally different than, you know, Matthew McConaughey and, and, and Woody Harrelson doing 10 episodes or 8 episodes. I mean, that's to shoot that. It's even like a film, shooting it in a, a few months. It's usually all about time. You know, it's I like to do a lot of different things. So it's, you know, it would have to be, it would have to be perfect. You know, so the typical network scenario of 22, 23, 24 is not something that, that really appeals to me. So, um, you know, and you're always weighing like anything, your job, your creative side versus, you know, your 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 financial side, what's good for your, your family, you know, and I don't like to, I like to work consistently like that on one job. I don't know if that's a it's nice to go without that choice. No, it is, it is, but it's also, it also, you know, because of the success of like the city of the city of you're like, okay, now you're, I'm able to go off and do tiny little movies that, that don't pay anything, maybe they're successful, maybe not, but, you know, that's my balance, you know, right now, of having, you know, we'll shoot Conjury at the end of the year, um, you know, and that'll hopefully be out next, um, next Halloween, so, you know, I write that train as long as I can. Do they need something to do with the doll? They do. Sing it in the middle. Or she couldn't let it go in the middle. Yes, in the back. Can you tell us anything about Big Stone Gap? Big Stone Gap, yeah, we shot that. Now, this is crazy because, so, I don't know if you, uh, so Big Stone Gap is, a ser is based on a series of, of, of books written by Adriana Trigiani. Um, yeah, there's a whole history involved there, but I, I will try not to ramble. Um, but um, Adrian Trigiani, who's an old family friend, who also became my wife's mentor, um, and got my, and really helped my wife get her first novel out, uh, one of my Polish girls. Um, so Adrian has been a family friend, and she's, yes, please applaud for this. Um, <laughs>
doesn't go to Toronto or something, and you know, maybe you can have it here next year or something, that would be cool. But it's all, you know, it's all that. As I said, it's out of my hand now, it looks great. I didn't ramble too much, did I? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes? Hi. For Christian, um, I saw Peter in the Star Catcher, and it was the funniest piece of work I've ever seen in my life. So, how did you keep from not bursting out laughing eight times a week? Uh, uh, especially with your name.
take a couple more questions. Yes, sir. And um, and so we 
I choreographed the sword fight in Phantom with um, with our second unit director and because the it's not something you really use. I haven't used since, but we loved it in school. And so I'm finding myself in a, in a big movie going, I'm getting to do parry one, parry two. I'm talking all these positions. That stuff that I'm going, what are you doing? And I was like, well, this is actually a sword fight. So, you know, you guys can hack away, but there's a skill to this. And I thought, well, it should be skilled. You know, so there are little things that I did that probably no one ever noticed, but to learn, this is also going to, not a euphemism, learn to ride bareback. Um, <laughs> Uh, and um, which was super fun, you know, vaulting on the horse, like doing all that stuff that goes by in a moment, but you know, uh, was was so awesome to just be in London for six months, and so it, it was one of those experiences, like like most of the film, is not defined on the success or the backlash of movies, it's defined on the experience. That's the thing that you have to remember that I feel like any young actor should always. You know, you, you cannot, it goes with any profession, but certainly with acting, when one is so subjective, whether you're a good actor or you're not. Um, especially in film, where usually the reception doesn't happen until a year later, you know, so you don't understand, you don't, you don't get that feedback of, of what a show feels like when you do it. And so with them, you show them um, peace, theaters of peace, so it's a show, oh, that show. Um, but it was one of those moments that the experience far outweighed whatever the commercial success of a film would be. And that's why it's still so near and dear to my heart, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, one more. Can you talk a little bit about your episode on um, Girls? On Girls? Yeah, it was like a five day French film where we just, like, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, shot out the can and just like, great, right, it'll be, you know, Backlash was uh, was fun and interesting, and thanks to my wife, who had some great uh, tweets and comments. And <laughs> it reflected the girl's uh, body image and the misogyny that goes on in Hollywood all the time. Uh, that very rarely, like I say, in any profession, but certainly as actors, where you're constantly sort of wondering. If valid or has any place. Um, that was one of those moments where you felt like, great, I caused some water cooler conversation. That's awesome. Because, you know, you just want to raise questions and not give answers. You know, and so, Girls was, uh, was an unbelievable experience for that alone. Shooting it was, you know, I didn't know Lena before, you know, we became friends after. You do when you're making this film. <laughs> You know, but it was, um, it was a very, it's also such a well-known ship over there. It's great to see someone that young have so much, uh, what skill set, and whatever you think of the show has no bearing. You just see someone that's 26 years old, at the time 24, 25, 26 years old, has directed the episodes, came up with the idea, playing this character. Um, English was directing that episode, so, so, you know, involved in the writing process. Very collaborative group of people. They're not a group of yes people, you know, who just sort of whatever you want, man. They're like, I don't know if this works. It's a great, great atmosphere, and that's where it all comes together. So it was a, a, a great, great experience. So anyway, thank you guys.